Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt Denampoli here. Welcome to episode 178 of Snack Minute. Um, again, we have our, our best friend, I would say, right? Quinn Snyder I mean, at this point, today. he should just host with us. I, I was going to say, at this point, I, I'm, I'm the co-host. Or he could take my spot. <laughs> <laughs> so Quinn's with us today, um, which is really exciting, as usual. He always has wonderful insights and things to show us. Uh, but a few months back, actually, we had Joe Clark on, and we were talking about um, Cisco Modeling Lab, CML, the free version that was going to be coming out. Um, but Quinn's here today to kind of dive into some details and show us what we need and talk about more of the technical aspects of things so that um, for those of you out there who are really pumped about this, like I am, um, we can get going as fast as possible. So Quinn, introduce yourself to those new snackers, if there are any new ones, um, and then we'll get right into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm Quinn. Uh, I, I think this is what 10 or 11 times I've been on here, uh, technical advocate with Cisco learning inserts. And I, I've, I'm actually really excited about the release of, of Cisco modeling labs free, because even before I joined Cisco back in the early days of, of Cisco modeling labs, like one dot X, I've been a, a, a huge fan and supporter of it. So seeing it evolve from the one dot X to now two dot X, and now the free version is, is super, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't be happier with it. We're excited too. Uh, you know, on the DevNet side, the CML sandboxes are the ones that are um, reserved most by a factor of like, 250. So I think all those people, I mean, it might affect our numbers on that, but um, I think we're giving an opportunity to people to really um, dig in with CML and have a lot more control than they might have had in scenarios where they were either using our sandbox or even potentially um, leveraging an enterprise uh, situation that they don't necessarily control. So there's really exciting opportunities. But also the, the Devna sandbox gives them a hosted solution that, that takes the heavy lifting of what um, hey, what Quinn is about to show us right now uh, with yeah. with downloading. There's also limitations. Uh, in my understanding is, um, and, and I'm sure Quinn is going to keep me honest here, but my understanding is it does not run on uh, your personal Mac. Uh, so you need to have a PC. And if that's the case, then, you know, DevNet Sandbox is a solution for you. But Quinn, with what I just said, clearly there are a lot of things that you need to know and understand and in order to successfully get CML free installed on your system. Can you walk us through um, your gotchas and what, what do you recommend? Yeah. So first of all, um, you know, props to DevNet. Um, the, the Cisco Modeling Labs documentation is is top notch. It's it's a first first rate uh, resource for everything. Um, and if you actually were to Google Cisco Modeling Labs free, the first link will take you to this page, the Cisco Modeling Labs free uh, page. Um, so first of all, in order to install it, you have to get it right. So there's a free sign up link where you will uh, input your information into uh, a registration page, and then you'll be given access to the Cisco Modeling Labs uh, installation um, available through our typical Cisco software download process. Um, couple of things, uh, that come with that. So the, the, the caveats and, and everything is covered in the documentations. The big thing is, is, is to your point, Kareem, uh, it, this is just a virtual machine that requires x86 virtualization. So the, the platform needs to be running x86 and then be x86 compatible for the vert, uh, side of things. Cause you're running, you know, VNFs, virtual network functions, right? Um, so you need to have an Intel based system. Uh, you can run it on your laptop if your laptop is Intel based. So it supports uh, all of the major virtualization pieces. So you can run it within uh, VMware Workstation. You can run it in ESXi. People have supported it in uh, Proxmox. And, and there's a whole community that's available out there to support that. But yes, you do need x86 processing power, first of all. Um, it is installed just like any other VM. Uh, so you need to be familiar with your virtualization system in order to install that. You have either an OVA or an uh, ISO to, to install that. Um, you'll be given two ISOs. One is the actual platform, and then one is the uh, what they call the RefPlat or the, the reference uh, ISO for all of the images that are there. So you're going to need both of those because uh, you need to have the, the Cisco Modeling Labs platform and the, the images to run, the, the virtualized images, the VNFs to be able to simulate your network. So you'll need both those ISOs. You'll need, you know, and like I said, all the documentation here of how to install that, the downloading CML free, installing CML free, it's all available on the, the developer uh, docs. If you were to, to just search for that, I'm sure we'll have that linked in the, in the notes as well. The other limitation behind that, uh, and, and I can touch a little bit more on this and uh, when we do a little bit of a, of a demo with it, is uh, 
Only five concurrent nodes are supported and is running at any one time. Yeah, I would mention that. Uh, and a node is anything that requires computing uh, power. So you have, um, uh, whether it's a router, a switch, a virtual desktop, that's, you know, you have, you all can run five concurrent nodes at a time. Um, and you're only given a small subset of the total images. So you talk about what's available with uh, the DevNet Sandbox, where you have lots of different images that are available. With the Cisco Modeling Labs Free Edition, you only have access to the uh, IOL, so iOS on Linux. Uh, iOS, or sorry, IOL L2, so uh, layer two image, so a virtual switch basically, uh, ASAV, and then a couple of uh, VMs that simulate desktop hosts. So you don't get the full suite of everything, uh, but you get quite a bit of, of different nodes and, and things that you can use to simulate different projects, especially in that associate to professional level, CCNP, CCNA. Uh, this is more than sufficient. Excuse me, more than sufficient for that. So we have kind of talked about what we can do with it and the limitations. Let's actually see what we can do. Quinn, I know, as usual, you probably have a demo to, to show us some cool stuff. Um, why don't we take a look at that? Yeah, so so first of all, to, again, to Kareem's point, this is, I, I run an, an, an uh, M-series Mac, uh, so I can't run this natively. I do have uh, this running, uh, just to show you kind of the whole Rocky and Bullwinkle, nothing up my sleeve, I'm not hiding anything. I am running this in a server that's sitting in my garage baking right now in the, in the Phoenix heat. <laughs> How do you keep that thing cool, man? <laughs> uh, it, it it goes off. It, it'll actually be turned off probably in the like like next three weeks when it uh, when the uh, garage becomes an oven. Um, but until then, I get to do this demo. He puts a fan on his bike and he just rides. He rides on his bike and he cools it off while he's typing. My visual is he has it racked in his fridge. <laughs> in his deep freezer where all his meat is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it is on that dot one seventy two address. And this is just an example. So I have a couple of different labs pulled up. What one of the things that you will see when you go to when you actually have it installed and you go to the web UI within Cisco Modeling Labs, you'll see that it is indicating a, a free tier. So it will it will show you that you are running free tier. So you can't like take a ref plat from another version and try to install it. This is is locked down, so you you're only allowed the five nodes and and the the node type that are there. However, and I'll just pull up my dashboard here. There's a lot of a variety of things that we can do with it. So all of these uh, topologies are ones that I have built inside of, of the lab itself and are supported. Uh, so you can see this one, I've got three desktops that are simulated with a core switch and I'm doing some OSPF here, different VLAN. So I'm doing some SVIs and some VLAN routing. So that whole multi-layer switching and some OSPF routing that's covered in the CCNA. Um, and then I also, I want to point out that this, this even though it's the Cisco Modeling Labs uh, free version is restricted to the types of nodes, under the hood, everything else is, is still the same. So like these uh, dynamic um, annotations that are there, that's supported. Things like PADI to break out. The breakout tool is supported for remote access, um, bridged interfaces. In fact, let me go back here to this network ad address translation here. So you can see I have more nodes than actually five. Uh, well, more icons than five on the screen. However, things like this unmanaged switch and the and the the, the breakout here uh, that allows me to connect my topology to my external network, uh, those are uh, don't count under my node limit. Um, only the, the only things that count are my routers and switches and uh, my virtual firewall. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. You get access to the ASAV as well uh, with this topology with this uh, the free tier. So all of that's supported within uh, Cisco Modeling Labs free. You get access to the API as well. So if you're looking to do some programmability, some automation, not just of the individual devices there, uh, but even of, of Cisco Modeling Labs itself, you get access to the, the Python client library, uh, access to the API. All of those things are still there and supported um, within uh, Cisco Modeling Labs um, free version, just as you would if you were running either the personal, personal plus or an enterprise version. I think you touched on uh, something here that, that I wanted to say. Um which is with Cisco Modeling Lab free and the ability to build topologies good enough for uh, our uh, associate level certification, especially the CCNA. I think this is a great tool that could be a sidekick for you to get uh, the hands-on uh, muscle memory training um, that you need for to pass the CCNA. So um, it's a great resource to have. It's good to have, um, as part of your your studying, we've also, I think uh, Quinn and I worked on a set of uh, Cisco U tutorials that allows you to leverage the CCNA, that allows you to leverage the Cisco Modern Lab free with 
topologies to import that so you could do the tutorials that are all centric around uh, CCNA and, and then you can actually get the hands-on training with uh, CML free. So it's a great resource for, uh, for, for learning. And, and one other piece behind that, Kareem. So in addition to having the, the being able to support all of the things that are required in the CCNA blueprint, so your multi-layer switching, your spanning tree, your OSPF, your NAT, your services, even to the point where we can test things like, for example, if I wanted to log into this device remotely. So just to show you, I have this broken out. So there's an external port that's connected to that breakout on that 192, 168, 128, 247. Uh, I can SSH into that. So if I were to just type in the credentials at Cisco Cisco, which is the default, you can see that I'm running here just as I would if I was remotely SSH'd into a device, um, uh, you know, running, uh, you know, a real router or something in, in the enterprise version. The other thing that I wanted to touch on is within the CCNA blueprint, we've added these things called lablets, where it's a it's a small lab environment that requires you to perform some configuration, and then the results of that configuration are checked against what we would expect uh, that thing to be. Um, all of those lablets are actually running iOS on Linux, IOL. So when you study for the CCNA using the Cisco Modeling Labs free, and you're building your topologies using IOL and IOL2, those uh, VNFs, so that, that simulated uh, to, uh, device is actually what you're going to be configuring in those lablets. So it's not just, hey, I can build these things and align to the blueprint. I can actually take, um, and I'm running on the same operating system versions, the same operating syntax. Everything is the same as what I was expect in the lablets on the CCNA and CCNP uh, uh, blueprint. So it's, it's, it uh, meshes in very well uh, with the entire uh, certification strategy and studying and all those different kinds of things as well. This is fantastic. Um, I mean, I know I was excited when Joe talked about it, but the thing that I've always noticed from the learning community is just challenge in getting access to things. For as many opportunities as we've tried to give, there's always limitations than barriers that we're hitting. And you guys have broken down a big one right now with us. Um, and I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of good feedback from the community on all of this. And, you know, I'm thinking about all of those Netacad students that are probably salivating, <laughs> so excited that they can get their hands on CML without having to you know, set a reservation or pay a bunch of money. Um, this is this is going to be an invaluable tool. And the fact that you guys have tied content to it and the lablets and everything, I just I, I can't commend you guys enough for how much thought and effort was put into this. I mean, I know it's been a few it's been a few years coming. It's really, really exciting to see it out the door now. Yeah, I, I second that. I, I think the team did a, a really good job. Um having that out as a resource for our community for free um it's it's very valuable quinn was there anything else that you wanted to cover as far as the installation and getting that up and running no i mean so so the installation like i said the, the documentation is there it, as long as you're familiar with how you install virtual machines so if you've installed a virtual machine uh on your on your windows pc or your intel based mac or your or your hypervisor it's it's the same as you would do there the instructions are great so you know the install they actually have you know here's the installation guide here's links here's all the things that you need to do um that's great you know there's a there's a vibrant community there's uh you know there's the C the cml community available on github where they have different topologies that are posted and and message boards and and issues and things like that there's a ton of support there um you know it's just it's a it's a to, to the point of, of making these things accessible, yes, this is a little bit more than a, a double-click install, um, but the power behind it and the community support that's available for you uh, is really, it, it's just incredible. And we're trying to make this as as universally accepted as possible because, um, I mean, I know that I use Cisco Modeling Labs in, in both my studies as well as uh, the, the 501c3s that I work with, um, trying to teach them the skills and things like that. So um, it's helping people, and I'm just happy to be able to bring a free version uh, for, that's accessible for everyone. Well, unfortunately, yeah. Quinn, that's all the time we have today. But I mean, this has been hyper informative and very exciting. Um, snackers, as soon as you can get out there and start to check out the uh, CML free and install it, start kicking the tires and um, get to learning. So thank you so much, Quinn, for, for cluing us in on all this. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Quinn. Thank you, Snackers.